hello everyone and welcome to my online class hope you might be doing well at home uh, so today we are going to discuss the chapter control and coordination from class 10 okay so let us proceed to today's class now <clears throat> first let us take a look at what are the topics available in this chapter first there will be a discussion on the introduction of the title of the chapter. Then we will discuss the nervous system in the animals. So when we discuss nervous system in animals, we discuss the uh, nervous system in humans. Then there will be a detailed uh, study on the function and the structure of human brain. Then we will discuss the coordination in plants as well. Then the last topic of this chapter will be hormone in the animals. Now as you have seen the chapter is a very uh, big one. So I have divided the chapter into four sections. Now. So each section will be one class. First class will be on the nervous system in animals that we are going to discuss today then on my next class it will be on human brain then third class will be on coordination in plants and fourth will be hormone in the animals so today we are going to discuss the nervous system in animals so uh, by control and coordination what do we know you see i can control my body isn't it i can move my hand whenever or however I want or I can move my legs as well. I am standing here. I am giving my speech so that I can control, isn't it? Also, some of the um, internal organs of our body, na, like suppose uh, the digestion process or the contraction or dilation of the pupil that is present in our eye, na, all these are also controlled but that we cannot control now by ourselves that happens automatically so how all this happen and who controls all this so that we are going to discuss in this class okay so uh, here take a look students uh, our body is controlled by two important systems what are the two important systems nervous system and the hormonal system the control and coordination of our body is possible due to this two system that is present in our body the nervous system is comprised of the brain the spinal cord and the various nerves that come out from our brain from our spinal cord now various wires like things come out from our brain come out from our spinal cord all this comprises the nervous system then hormonal system are there are various glands present inside our body which secrete some chemicals. No? These chemicals are called hormones which helps in the coordination of our body. So, nervous system and hormonal system are the two things no? that help in the control and coordination of our body. Now, take a look at this picture. This is a hot object. Maybe a hot uh, cup of water. No? So, if you are going to touch that hot object, how we will know that this object is hot? Or if I touch that object, my hand may get burned. How we will get that information? No? So, that will be traveled to the brain first, that message. And the brain will send the signal no? that this object is hot and you should not touch that. So, how all this happens in our body? So, that we are going to discuss now. Okay. So, let us proceed. As I have already said, our nervous system comprised of brain. This is the picture of the brain. Then comes the spinal cord. Okay. The brain leads to the spinal cord. And this is the picture of that spinal cord. And these are the various nerves that comes out from your brain, from your spinal cord and which connects the brain and spinal cord to all the parts of your body. Okay. 
Now these wires are like what? When at home you look in your switchboard, various wires come out from the switchboard, isn't it? So like that, these wires connect to all the parts of the body. Okay. Now this nervous system consists of three parts generally. Central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and the autonomous nervous system. Now this brain and spinal cord are the parts of the central nervous system and the nerves, various nerves that come out of the brain and spinal cord as we have discussed. So that are parts of the peripheral nervous system. Now these nerves helps to connect the different parts of our body to the central nervous system. Then comes the autonomous nervous system. Now as we have discussed, there are various involuntary organs of our body which we have no control. Now, like we can move our hands and legs, but internal organs we cannot control. So, they are coordinated by the autonomous nervous system. Okay. Then, we know that the messages are carried to the brain. Isn't it? From where the stimulus originates. Now, what do we mean by stimulus? Stimulus means any change in the environment. In that picture, we have seen that hot object, hot cup of water. So, that is a stimulus for my hand. So, that stimulus uh, where the body will experience will uh, provide some electrical signals. So, that are carried by the neurons to the brain. So, neurons are what? Neurons are the structural and the functional unit of the nervous system. This is the main, main uh, part of the nervous system. Okay, These neurons will carry the message to the brain in the form of what? In the form of electrical impulses. Look here, the nervous system uses electrical impulses to transmit the messages. The messages are carried in the form of electrical signals to the brain. And when the brain will receive the signal, it will process what to do or how to respond to that stimulus. And again, it will pass on the output to the uh, part of the body where the stimulus is uh, uh, realized to the by the various neurons present. Okay? Like uh, take the example of suppose a computer. Uh, if you uh, give any input to the computer, the CPU, the main processing part of the computer will process and it will give an output, isn't it? So like that, our brain will also process the stimulus that will come in the form of electrical impulses. Then it will give an output, no? what to do or how to respond to that stimulus. Then, how do the neuron look? The neuron that we have discussed looks like this. Take a look at this picture. This is the structure of the neuron. Now in the neuron, what are the parts? This part is called the cell body. In the cell body, this middle part is called the nucleus. Then this finger-like projections are called the dendrite. And as it comes down, this part is called the axon. And the last part of the neuron is called the nerve ending. So, this is the structure of the neuron. Now, in the next picture, I will show you the labeled diagram of neuron. And students, you should practice the diagram very well along with the labeling. No? Labeling is very important for your exam. So, if you don't label, you may not get full marks. So, practice the diagram along with the parts okay so this is what the cell body in the middle nucleus and these are the finger like projections these are called dendrite so what happens when any stimulus originates now any stimulus happens now then the dendrite present in the neurons will catch the stimulus and it will convert into electrical signal and it will be passed through the cell body. After coming to the cell body, it will pass on through the axon. This part is the axon. And this blue 
layers are called myelin sheet. These are some protein coverings. So it will pass through the exon and then it will reach the end portion of the nerve. These are called nerve ending. Okay. So um, the first the dendrite will catch the signal and it will pass through the cell body then exon and then it will reach the end portion of the nerve, nerve ending. Now what will happen? When the nerve will end here, again another exon will come. No? It is not that only one exon is carrying the signal. There are many exons, one after another, connected. So that finally reaches to the brain. So when this uh, here nerve ending will come, again the signal will be transferred to the next neuron. And after that neuron will end, again it will pass to the third neuron, like the different neurons will come and then finally it will reach to the brain. So, um, okay, synapse means the point where one neuron will end and another neuron will start. That gap is called the synapse. Now look here, the point at which a nervous impulse passes from one neuron to another. Now, when the electrical signal from one neuron will come to the nerve ending, in that nerve ending, the electrical signal gets converted into chemical signal. Now it will become chemical signal. That is called neurotransmitter. So that chemical signal will be catched by the dendrite of the next neuron. But again, that chemical signal will be converted into chemical uh, electrical signal. And it will be passed on to the cell body, exon, and again it will reach the nerve ending. Where again it will become chemical signal and again the further next neuron will catch that signal. So like that finally it reaches to the brain. So these students look, this is the picture of the synapse. This is one neuron, this is the second neuron. In between here the gap, this is a close view of this portion. Look here, this gap is called the synapse. Here what happens? Chemical signal are released by the nerve ending. This is the nerve ending of this neuron. Here chemical signal are released and this chemical signal are catched by the dendrite of this neuron. And again it will convert into electrical signal and it will pass on through the neuron of this one no? exon. Exon part of this neuron. And finally it reaches the brain and when the brain will uh, receive the electrical impulse, it will process and again it will send a response through the neurons and like that only it will pass on and then reach to where the stimulus has originated. Okay. So, this is the function of the synapse. Okay. So, basically what we have studied today, let us take a conclusion. First, we have discussed that nervous system consists of brain, spinal cord and the various nerves. Also, we have discussed that the nervous system consists of central nervous system, peripheral and the autonomous nervous system. Also, we have discussed that neurons are the structural and the functional unit of the nervous system, which carry the electrical impulses to the brain. Also, the response from the brain is carried to where the stimulus is originated by the neurons. Now, we have discussed in detail the structure of the neurons. Very, very important. Okay. So, the structure, how it looks and what are the different parts. Also, we have studied. Moreover, we have discussed the importance of synapse or where the synapse originates. That also we have discussed. So, students, uh, this is my first class on the nervous system. Um, on my second class, I will be discussing on human brain. Thank you.